Hello, welcome. Firstly, I just want to say, if you get outside, shoot. Anyone can get outside, anyone can pick up a camera, anyone can get outside and learn these little techniques. Learn depth of field, learn how to compose, learn how to create colors and a nice feeling in an image, okay? So I'm gonna break this down nice and simple and how I shoot. If you're not following me in my, in my photography, check out joshball underscore images for some of my lifestyle content and model work that I've been shooting. I have lucky enough to be collaborating with Canon and doing a few things with some really cool brands locally. And I'm just gonna break this down. Now, I've got this recorder on because I'm going to record my screen so I can really easily make it, make it simple for you guys to look at what I'm doing. Okay, so let's run through the exposure triangle. Huh, huh, huh. We have a triangle, right? So in photography, it is the exposure triangle. Now let's talk about aperture. Aperture is the light that enters through the, which enters through the lens. Aperture is the light that which enters through the lens. Now we can, I'm gonna try and show you here. Uh, the aperture is this hole that you can see. And it is this tiny little hole that allows light to come through. And as that, as the aperture, the higher the aperture, f22, the smaller that hole is going to be. The lower the aperture, 1.2, for example, for this lens, the wider that hole gets. Now, the wider that hole gets, the more light comes in. And not only that, more having more light, it brings you more depth of field and bokeh. So, for example, we'll see Kia here. I've, I've dialed the aperture right down to get that really shallow depth of field that focuses on her eye and the rest of the back, black background is blurry. Now if I was to wanting to get everything in focus, I would bring that aperture right up to f22 and everything will be in focus. Now depth of field is creating that bokeh. If you want to shoot models or bring out the subject of your, your, video, your photo, uh, let me show you how we can do a bit of depth of field here. Don't have a model today, but I'm going to use this leaf. Perfect example. All right, so let's say we want aperture is at aperture is at 1.2, and then we're going to pull. We're going to bring our shutter down to a thousand to expose correctly, and then let's take a photo of this leaf. 50 mil right there, and we get beautiful bokeh in the background as the leaf is, is br brought right out in a really nice subject. Now let's bring this aperture right up and because it's gone dark, because it's closing that, closing the sensor, it's closing the, the light hitting the sensor in the camera, we need to adjust another part of the exposure triangle. So now we want to bring the shutter down and we don't want to go too, too slow. It's at 100 now. I think we might bring the ISO up to expose better. Let's go ISO 800 and F9, let's go F22, F16, bring the ISO up to 1000, F16 and 100 shutter. So you'll see that more things are going to be in focus now. So as you can see here, a lot more parts of the image is now in focus because we've really brought the aperture up and, and closed that depth of field. It either it allows more light in and gives you that depth of field, that depth of field, that bokeh, that beautiful creamy blurry background that everyone loves shooting portraits on and getting that, really bringing that subject out from that blurry background. But if we don't want that and we want more things in focus, just bring the aperture up to 10, 12, whatever, something like that, and then adjust accordingly of your shutter and ISO, and then you get more in focus. The more f-stops the lens will go down to, the aperture of 1.2, the more expensive they are as a lens. This 50 mil is 3, 000, just over $3,000, where what I'm shooting on now is an, it goes down to f4. So it's a cheaper lens because you can't get that amount of light in because when you want to bring that light in and go down to a lower aperture f-stop, 1.2, in darker conditions. So it's a better lens to have in your tool bag or in your kit uh, when you're challenged with low light situations. So you can really bring that 
aperture down to 1.2 and then bring the ISO up and then go low as possible with the shutter so you can get as much light in with using all three parts of the exposure triangle when you're shooting in challenging dark conditions. The other side of exposure triangle is shutter speed. As you can see, uh, to, to freeze a frame, uh, a car driving or something happening quite fast, someone surfing, you want to bring your shutter right up. So you want to bring the shutter up to as fast as it can go. So it just captures that image, just like a still image. But if you want some blurry motion and you want to, you want to, some people like the blurred look, then bring your shutter down. So lower the shutter and it captures that like the, the motion more. So in order to do that, you're going to have to adjust different parts of your camera to get that blurry motion because as you lower the shutter speed, that, that allows, that's taking the photo for that amount of time. Now you want to, t so if it's taking that photo, it's letting more light in. So you need, you're going to have to bring up your aperture. And then for the third part of the exposure triangle is ISO. ISO is artificial light that the camera produces that is coming into the, the photo, the image. You want to keep away from this, from dialing it up really high because that introduces grain and we don't want too much grain in our image. Now at a really dark time, we want to try and bring down our aperture to as low as we can go, our shutter as low as it can go but not blurry and then bring the ISO up but not too far. Maybe on the Canon I use around 2,500, 3,000-ish anything above that it starts to look too grainy so you want to be careful of that as well exposure triangle it's going to take time and it's not going to happen overnight you need to set your camera up so what feels comfortable for you on the top i have my shutter on the for my index finger on the th my thumb is my aperture and i just can quickly dial this dial as well and that's my iso so Set your camera up, which in the settings uh, suits you, what feels right for you. If you, struggle for, if you struggle for confidence while shooting, the only way to improve it is to get out there and shoot. It's through repetition that you'll find what you enjoy shooting and your style. And from every single shoot, you bring in what you enjoy and you put out what you don't enjoy in your photos. So deconstruct, emulate, analyze, repeat just dear it. Deconstruct your photos, deconstruct your favourite photographer's fo images and think, okay, why do I like that? What is it about their photos that I enjoy? Emulate those photos. So go out there and try and shoot photos similar to that. Copy them while you're starting. That's all, that's f there's no rules. Emulate their photography and then try and figure out what you're doing well and what you're not doing well. Analyze your photo. Dive deep into why you think your photos are good or why they're, they're just not as, as appealing as what you'd like them to be. And remember, when you're doing that, focus on the story. Story is king. I can't stress this enough how much a story in an image is important. It brings the viewer in. Location, character, event. And then once you have worked that out, repeat the process. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Deconstruct, emulate, analyze, repeat. How long can I hold this camera up for? 